I get all the credit, of course, or try to, but uh, nobody believes me anyway. So she's probably safe. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, but yeah. And, and then she had uh, a few years ago, a health scare with uh, cancer and uh, that plays a role in everybody's mind. And obviously we're not the only family that's gone through that by any means, but it, it helps uh, reprioritize. Hey, George Doobie, how are you doing today, my friend? Welcome. I am to- doing yeah. awesome. Oh, Thank yeah, you. We, we, we jumped over there each other a little bit there. George, you, we're yes. so excited to talk. It's been oh, yeah. so many years. <laughs> First and foremost, George, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. It's Looking been, forward to this. How many years has it been? You know, it's been, geez, I would bet it's been probably five or six years since we probably have had uh, for, a... For sure, pre-COVID, right? Yeah. And, um, but it, it's been a bit. Yeah. It's like, is there anything else before COVID? Like, you know, when the world shut Seems down for... Seems to evaporate, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I honestly don't know some days what year it is. Like, when did we do that? We wrote Niagara Falls. What year was that? Well, uh, geez, that would have been what, 2018. Really? <laughs> like, it was that long ago? <laughs> so, uh, George, it was um, first and foremost, uh, I, I know when I first reached out to you, it was a few months ago and it was right during, you know, tax time. And, and, right, and, right. and it, uh, stupid me of sitting there going, George, would you like to do a podcast? And you came back and said, uh, Russ, you do know it's tax time. <laughs> How's, how's, how's June? And I go, I, I go understood. So I, I'm honored that you have the time uh, for us to catch up and have this conversation today. I, I, again, I've been looking forward to this for a while. It's just, uh, we do have certain realities with uh, our, our calendars that are, are hard to be back when Revenue Canada has the whip in their hand. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know if it was you that told me or if maybe it was another accountant that told me. Um, especially in the tax ones that are really their practices focus around tax. It's like a, a statistically significant statistic. I guess that's the department of redundancy department there that a lot of accountants have children born nine months at the, after the end of, <laughs> of the end of tax season, typically. That didn't come from me okay. uh, to my recollection. So that would be um, what, so it'd be April. So it would be April, May, you know, going backwards, April, yeah. March, Feb, like February, January, or any of your kids. Yeah, in, in, that? in fairness, my son's born in January. <laughs> <laughs> there, so there you go. You, 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 you proved my point, I guess, a little bit there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think it might've been somebody that said that, you know, like it is such a, a time pressure. It's such a time crunch. It's just, you know, one of those things that uh, it's life, you know, and, um, mm-hmm. and, and it's one of those things that we have to do. And a lot of people's calendars revolve around their tax planning as well. Right. It, it, it is. It's, we can complain about it. We can do this, we can do that, but it's not changing. So um, we live with it. And obviously as an accountant, that's part of, our lifestyle, really. Yeah. Or or we could be down in the States where they're hiring. Aren't they, or wasn't it something I read that they're hiring a whole bunch of more IRS agents and they're they're actually getting them to bear arms and they're getting them in firearm training? <laughs> it's like, Wait, that, that's been, as I understand it, and I do not pretend to be a U.S. tax expert in the slightest, but um, it, it's certainly been my understanding for quite a number of years that that uh, was exactly the case. Yeah, that, that's the last um, thing I want is my IR, my tax collector person a pack and eat if you will right, right. <laughs> yeah that, that uh, leads to all sorts of images that are not exactly soothing yes and that that'll go down a different conversation topic there <laughs> in and of itself um okay so i i've got a an entire list of questions that i want to ask but at the same time I'm, I'm more importantly want to have a conversation, right? It's one of these things is I don't want to grill you and interview you and stuff like that. I just, you know, it's two, two friends having, uh, you know, having a big giant glass of, of water. This is my father's day present. My kids gave me a big giant oh, Yeti. It's like yeah. a, a liter. So it's like, they right. obviously told me I need to drink more water. <laughs> um, but I, I just want to have a conversation and catch up first. And I do have some, some questions because I know how knowledgeable you are on a lot of things, real estate. And I'm a firm believer is always go to the experts and let the experts tell you what you don't know. Because, you know, as real estate investors, we can't know everything. That's why we have a team. That's why we have experts, experts, advisors, expert counsel, expert people that can know more than we know about certain things. And that's what I would consider you to be as part of that, part of that team. Uh, first and foremost, um, 
for people that might not know you, what, uh, fill us in a little bit of the backstory about George Doobie. Where, how you kind of got your your start into this whole world of of uh, real estate investing, also within the world of accounting within real estate investing, and and, and I'm also going to f- frame this as you're not a typical uh, accountant, a typical tax planner. You're, and I'm going to make some enemies with this next comment I'm going to make. I'm going to make some enemies, <laughs> but 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 you're an accountant with a personality. Right. Thank you. And and you have some flair and, and you you push the envelope with your social media and you're looking sharp. You got the bow tie like you, you, you got the shtick going, if you will. Right. You got the marketing angle going at the same time. And you more importantly, and sorry, most importantly, you know your stuff. That's the yes. most important. But what's the backstory? What's the backstory of George Doobie and how you got going in this whole game? Probably similar to many stories. Quite frankly, it was an accident. And uh, quite a number of years ago, I was sick as a dog, laying on a couch, and watched. And, and, and again, I can't read. I'm, my head's spinning. Whatever it is, and I watch one of these late night infomercials explaining how I will be the next uh, wealthy tycoon if I only take the weekend course, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I'm feeling better later the in the week. On the weekend, I pop into my office and I make, and to clarify, my office, a rented office, and I take the boardroom table and I make two piles. On one end is a pile of those clients in the real estate side that were making money, the other end of the table, losing money. And I start studying and I go over to whatever the bookstore was called at the time. And I spend several thousand dollars in real estate oriented, whether that was tax, legal, investment, investing strategy. Just if I could find a real estate book, I probably bought it that day. And um, I start studying, uh, studying online, starting to go to uh, different uh, meetup groups, if you will, and learning about real estate because kind of my impression was that in Tax 101, you're sort of taught something to the effect of thou shalt not invest in real estate. And certainly thou shalt not use a corporation for that. And so why do all these other people seem to be so successful? Why do these people seem unsuccessful? And, and that was really the start of that portion of it, which then got kickstarted very, very shortly thereafter with I needed more space because I was subleasing from another accountant and he was growing. I was growing. I was subleasing. So guess who was moving? (laughs) And uh, and quite frankly, I couldn't afford um, at that point in the game, a, a, a separate building, but I was determined I do not want to be in a, a rental situation again and making a long story short, I, or shorter, I guess I can't make story short, but um, I, I had a uh, an agreement with my brother-in-law who was looking for a place to live. And we said, okay, I am going to, we ended up buying uh, basically a three-story building where ground floor we used as an accounting firm, uh, second floor for him and his wife, And then there was a a walk-up attic that we were using for miscellaneous accounting firm, bury stuff upstairs type of thing. And we had the agreement that in two years' time, um, he would leave and find a different place for a personal residence, and the accounting firm would take that over. And we were growing, and anyway, a year later, he had to leave. (laughs) Um, And then we ended up buying... um, it, it was uh, five um, properties that we ended up condoing. And then we bought this property and then we brought that property. We started seeing, wait a minute, if we could get into it, fix them up a little bit, that tremendous ups kick we had in terms of the value of the property. And if you could do it once, you can do it twice. And if you can do it two times, you can do it four times. And then I was hooked. Wow. So you, so you, your story isn't as an, an accidental landlord, but an accidental landlord that just needed to just 
house a growing business. So you were buying your own commercial spaces. You were just paying yourself the rent in, in essence over, over the years. But I, I do not know that I would have ever started without really trying to crack this code of why should you invest in real estate? Because I think I would have probably just continued to be in a leasing situation. I would have just tried to perhaps lease more space, for example. Yep. So I, I would imagine you've been, you, you got trained in, in accounting. Like, what's your background? Like, you, you did get trained. Did you start right out of university kind of thing? How did you get into, into the discipline of accounting? Accounting for me was actually started in high school. Okay. And we are, had are a, you about to say your lemonade stand and your paper route and you were you were doing the books for everybody and you had an abacus and all and you had the little visor hat close. and all that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I had uh I guess a luxury of a, a personal friend of the family who had his own small accounting practice in the little town we grew up in. And as as well, my dad was a, a manager at a particular business, good friends with the controller of the company. And I was around accountants a, a fair bit. And what I, one of the things I realized was that I liked business, but I was going to get bored if I was in one business or my business. Being an accountant allowed me to sample and be involved in different scenarios Originally, I thought I was going to be captain debits and credits. I had, uh, again, we had the uh, in Laurel High School. Making a long story shorter, they had a really, really super duper at the time um, software package that was given to them by the provi- the software makers, intended for all the students, et cetera, et cetera. But nobody knew how to use it or teach with it or anything of that nature. So they gave it to me, and I over the summer, as I recall. I started learning how to use this program that I could never have remotely afforded as a high school student. I, I don't know what today's value would have I, at the time. I think I'm throwing a number out, but I really don't recall. Um, I, I think the package was in what would have been 19. Ooh, that goes back a few years. Um, say eighty-seven dollars, about about a fifteen thousand dollar package. Which for a high school student, let alone somebody today, was a little bit of money. Yeah. What was that? What, what was that program? It was called ACPAC. Of course, yes. <laughs> and um, and again, it was something where I just started playing and trying to understand and and take what I was learning in high school for accounting courses. But say, here's my fictional business. Here's my lemonade stand. And what happens in your lemonade stand if you get too much inventory? What happens if you do this? What happens if you do that? So that I was starting to understand, practically speaking, how these different accounts tied in and what happened. What were my consequences as compared to being tested on, can you balance a ledger, do this or do that, which is important. But I wasn't learning about how to apply it to a real business. Wow. So so you legitimately... Not only just you didn't just come into it this as a profession and and and, a, and an education and a train. You were in many respects. This is what you were born to do. In many many, like you literally got deep into the science and the theory. And I imagine you probably study this kind of stuff too in growing up. Absolutely. Well, I mean, there'll be a lot of people that would disagree with me. I think I went to the best university in the country at the time. And that's the University I, I, of Saskatchewan, right? Out in, it was very close. Oh, very, very good. Close. Very good, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately beside that was called the University of Waterloo. Of, oh, wow. That's and, a, uh, close, a close second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, but more seriously, at the time, it had, at least for Ontario, um, the only program, and I believe at the time it was the only program in the country with the exception of McGill, where we could go and take their master's program and bypass a variety of professional requirements and jump to the final exam. And, and, and so using that as the measuring stick, I said, that must be the best there is. I can't speak French, so that determines I am going to Waterloo. And uh, I, I was uh, accepted, uh, did very well there. I didn't realize I was a tax person until co-op. 
and uh, kind of fell in love with tax. I, I tried the debits and credit, and I'm grateful for those experiences. I, I tried to, f- the nice thing was I had an excellent co op placement where I could try different things, I could experiment, I could fail, I could succeed. But I like the tax side of things. And from there, that got me going. And again, at the time, it was more, it was in Windsor. So it was, it was definitely more of a manufacturing background, but as well, some real estate. I didn't really fall in love with real estate at that point. It, not that I minded it, but quite honestly, I like kind of playing with some of the manufacturing where uh, we would do inventory accounts to make sure the books were good. And I like playing in the wherever, whoever had a defense contract, for example, because I had to see the, what was going on there. Yep. Okay, so that's fun to do. And but the real estate just it didn't come for a little bit later, yeah. admittedly. Wow. And and see, so, see, gang, that's that's why I'm, I wanted to talk to George, and that's why he he has um, a successful practice with lots of clientele is that you You love this work. Now, I, I'm going to give you another side of the coin here. I graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce out of the University of Saskatchewan. Um, <laughs> I could not, I honestly, I just know thyself, I could not sit through an accounting class. I honestly, it was one of those things that it was just like, I, and, and I'm no, there's no slight. As a matter of fact, I have such great respect for people that can. I just could not do it. I just could not do it. I I gravitated towards more the uh, the finance, the op, the OB, the op, organizational behavior. I graduated uh, into more of that HR side, people side stuff like that a little right. bit more. Um, but I just couldn't do the accounting. <laughs> I just couldn't. So that's why you find an expert like George on your team to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And if we were all good at the same thing, that would be fairly useless. And yeah. I, I, I am, I, I think, awesome at what I do. Um, not perfect, but awesome. Yep. But that also means there's a gazillion things I'm not very good at. Yeah. And and one of the things you also do too is you're you're part of. Now it's been a while, and I could get this wrong, but I remember you were saying you were part of the. I might get the terminology wrong, but you're part of the steering committee of a lot of kind of policy changes within CRA. Do you still do that kind of advocacy advocacy work? I, I, I do not at this point in time. So when I joined uh, BDO, I had to give up uh, one my position with our professional body because it was geared to small practitioners, and, and as a, an international accounting firm, that didn't quite uh, fit the bill. Um, but I, I'd also spent by that time, I, I don't know the exact time frame, but, um, say six years or whatever, kind of in that role and it was time to move on. Yep. And, and then with the, the, the CRA, uh, role that you suggested or, or, or mentioned there, you're absolutely right. Uh, we, we were doing that. And, and then there came a time where there were the budget cuts at Revenue Canada, quite frankly, and Revenue Canada stopped doing the program. There were some kind of some intermittent um, steps in there, but um, nothing that's really gone about in furthering that, um, at least at a, on a, what I'll call a community level, right. um, locally. And maybe there's something there that I'm not aware of, but it, it's certainly the, the programs that I was involved with, again, it was it was great to be part of in that we had the opportunity. I guess there were three of us, three three of us uh, as outsiders, um, representing our colleagues in the legal and accounting professions. And then the, we would have the head of audit, that the head of this, the head of that at Revenue Canada for, in this case, the Kitchener Waterloo region. And how else to get access to those individuals and and, and have the opportunity to see as well. May comes a shock to some people, but they have kids. They're humans. Um, they're good people. Um, and, and trying to get into some of their frustrations, what they, the realities they have to deal with. Not that we always agreed with each other, but y- you can start to appreciate better. I think maybe a good way of s- describing it. What's going on for them? Yep. You know, why they do certain things? Yeah, and and I, I imagine. And well, it, it's sad that they don't do that anymore. Reaching out to public practice of stuff would be very good for business to help understand and smooth over the waters. And the one thing I, I have always respected about you, George, is um, you've always, you've never been shy about taking a position on something. 
and <laughs> and defending it and whether yes. it it proves to be wrong or right and in, in interpretation that's literally when it comes to tax everything's an interpretation in many respects sure. right but I remember one time you it was uh, it was about um, I think the 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 topic was oh it was about um, having like a masterminds and education programs and when we both were part of the real estate investment network people were having well can I have my rain membership dues be expense and stuff like that and you you took a very uh, hard position on it's like you proved it here's the research here's the education here's everything you get from it 100% this is necessary for you to do your job and if revenue canada wants to question me on it here's my phone number <laughs> Yeah, and, and made quite clear. Yeah, I was deducting it for sure. Yeah, I, I was happy to be the first test case. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, people, for the most part, I mean, I'm not going to distinguish my financial statements or my tax returns from any of other qualified individuals. There's lots of qualified folks across the country that can do that. Where I'm going to add my bang for the buck, though is how do the rules apply to you? Uh, what should you be doing today and what should you be doing down the road to put yourself and your family, what's important to you, your legacy, into what you consider a better position? And uh, and again, not that I'm the only advisor that's capable of that. I don't want to suggest that in the slightest, but I'm also one of the top ones, in my opinion, not being able to do that. Yeah. And and I think it was you that once said this, I might be quoting something from you as well, is um, stuck with me was don't let the tax tail wag the dog too, which a lot of people will sit there and make decisions of what to do, what not to do based upon tax. And, you know, you came out very clearly said, gang, let's not let the tax tail wag the dog here. Do what's right for the business. Um, right. We'll figure the tax part out uh, you know, and I'll give you an opinion, I'll give you an interpretation, but don't let the tax decision cloud the right decision for your business. Yeah, and, and I think we're trying to convey there that yes, tax is important. And yes, I'd like to see things figured out and kind of narrow things down so you can make an educated decision. But it's not always going to be the deciding factor at the end of the day. It's it's important, but not the only factor. Yeah, it's a factor. It's not the That's only right. factor. Is but a lot of people. It's amazing how a lot of people just fear the fear the tax, right? And fear an audit and fear those kind of things. Like, don't get me wrong. I've I've been through it, and and I had some. They're not fun. I had some god awful ugly ones. Like my the person I was working with told me in. 40 years of doing it, he's never seen somebody that was so much of a, I'm not going to swear, but uh, so much of a, you know, blank hole yes. of, of doing stuff. And, and I could tell stories until the cows came home, but it was, it was not pleasant. But at the end of the day, at a worst case scenario, I had to clean up a whole bunch of systems. I had to clean up a whole bunch of things, how I was doing my record keeping, how I was doing things. It just really shone a light on some weaknesses in my process. And I had to clean all that up. We clawed a whole bunch back, but you know, mm -hmm. when they come out and they just before Christmas, they send you a letter that we're throwing out $278,000 of expenses. Uh, Merry Christmas. Get your attention. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Right. <laughs> Yes. So we managed to claw it back and I could tell a really in-depth story on that, but it's, uh, we lived and we survived. Right. And, uh, we lived to battle another day and there was, and it came down to is there were some hills that we were willing to die on and there were some hills that we were just willing to just let go. And sure. that was, you know, let them have that one, but we're not going to die on this hill. We're going to, we're going to go, we're going to town on this one, but anyways, mm -hmm. I digress. Um, so, so suffice it to say, you're a real estate investor. If you don't mind me asking, what what kind of what does your portfolio kind of look like today? In in many respects of holdings and what kind of properties you have, residential, all commercial, mixture, both. What do you what do you kind of at? Yeah, so 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 now it's in terms of what I will call the traditional real estate. It is long term hold uh, residential, predominantly in more or less southern Ontario. Uh, commercial in the sense of self-storage, for example, uh, a few hundred units of uh, that in a few locations. Uh, private real estate equity, w which is going to include BC, Alberta, United States, uh, Ontario, 
and um, second mortgages, promissory notes, things of that nature, short-term rentals. Um, so th- th- there's a handful. It's not what I would call ginormous, but it's also not a starter portfolio either. Well, I, I think you're being very humble here, by the way, too, George. And, and uh, but so so suffice it to say, um, you're a real estate investor. Um, that sure. is an expert at tax and you have multiple other businesses. You both have direct ownership, plus you also have um, ownership through, uh, I imagine through funds, through private lending, you, you're, you're, you're full on in the business. I, th- I think so. It's, and, and, and as, uh, my wife, Robin and I, as we get older, uh, as our kids situation, our family situations change, we evolve as the economy changes. It, there's a, a variety of factors. I think that pop in there in terms of how that portfolio is evolving. But it's it's not something that is going to what I'll call permanently shrink. It, it we may sell right now. We're looking at selling uh, some of the properties, but it's not to say we're getting out of the market. It's to say it's being repositioned yeah. and uh, moving forward. Because even if Robin and I may not require it for retirement purposes, uh, we're trying to build a legacy yep. with. Four kids, church, cancer society, all those things that are important to different people, then that's it for us as well. Yeah. Now, you're one of those professionals that you, you eat what you cook, and you're also not one of those people that just pontificate of what somebody should be doing. You actually do this yourself. And, and, and happy to share those yep. positive and negative experiences uh, with people so that, again, I'm not trying to pretend we did everything perfectly. But um, there's also no reason for people to make all the mistakes that you and I see people make all the time if we can help coach them through some components of that. Not that they're not going to still make some other mistakes or at times say, ah, Russell, George, you don't really don't know what I'm talk- you're talking about. I can do this, that, or that. And some pe- it happens. But yeah. so that it's going to be decreased anyway. <laughs> those uh, silver salt and pepper in the beard uh, yes, have, yes. have, have come, for a reason have, have been earned the, the old-fashioned way right <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> through, through time through time and battle right right, right. It's, it, it, it's it's the reality to it yeah well you're looking fantastic by the way my friend thank you thank you um as are you yeah well thank you you know look at listen to us uh, uh, fishing fishing for some for compliments yeah, for we, each we, other we right? need all the help we can get exactly <laughs> i i we ha- i have a face for podcasting by the way so that's what the joke <laughs> i make um how are the family how's the kids doing how old are the kids now i remember when we first when we first connected we go almost back 20 years almost now yeah right? I, I mean we really got started when my daughter was just barely out of diapers she's now 22 <laughs> oh, wow. and um the uh, and my son's sixteen, and and so he's on his way to getting his driver's license. That's a, a primary focus of his right now. But both are involved in the the real estate side as well. Oh, that's uh, fantastic! And my daughter, she well, actually, I guess with my son too. Now they they own a couple of properties or portions of property, and just starting off. But that also helps keep them. Well, wait a minute. How do, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And then they're watching dad and mom and then people around us in terms of what they're up to. And, and, and again, as, as they get older, clearly they can understand more and, and ask more detailed questions. And it's a lot of fun in that mentorship role, yeah. particularly, I, I mean, I love doing it with clients and friends, love it even far more with my own kids. Yeah. It, and it's so amazing on once you have that longer runway when you're in your early twenties of, of having that, um, you know, I didn't get started to my thirties, which was still young at the time right. of that, but that extra five to seven years can make a huge it's difference huge. right, <laughs> on that runway as well. And if you can definitely get in when you're a little earlier in the process, um, your lovely wife, Robin, um, how's yes. she doing? She's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and she just recently, I guess you would say retired from, BDO. So she was uh, one of three directors in the the country for the marketing group. Oh wow! And uh, she she would kind of be what I would translate loosely in terms of 
helping with special projects or turnaround aspects from that marketing perspective. And she uh, de- decided that um, after lots of thought and what have you, it was time to, to, to retire and focus on family. Um, and, and family meaning not just the four of us, but as well my folks, her folks, her aunts. So, so look, I'll, I'll kind of, and, and they're in relatively good shape. Uh, like nobody's in, in horrible shape. But um, as we get older, I mean, even as I get older, I mean, I notice the difference between uh, today and five years ago, for example. Yeah. Um, but so she's she's helping do that. And she's obviously uh, instrumental in our actual real estate uh, por- portfolio. She ma- she manages the portfolio at the end of the day, um, and, and believe it or not, she manages the bookkeeping to that. Um, I, I get the final say, and we'll take care of the final returns and adjustments and things of that nature. But uh, she probably does ninety seven percent of the work to it. Um, I get all the credit, of course, or I try to, but uh, nobody believes me anyway. So she's probably safe. Yep. And, uh, but yeah, but yeah. And, and then she had, um, uh, a few years ago, a health scare with uh, cancer and, um, that plays a role in everybody's mind. And obviously we're not the only family that's gone through that by any means, but it, it helps uh, reprioritize. Yeah. And, and, you know, t- tell her I said, hello, first and foremost. Um, sure. I've, uh, every time I've had a conversation with Robin, uh, it's just like, I walk away and I, I feel like a much better person after I've talked to her. Like if you, if you open up the dictionary and you look at wonderful person in the dictionary, there's a picture right. of your wife in there. Like, thank you. Like there's an old, there's an old saying from Saskatchewan is use good people. She's like, she's amazing. Uh, just, mm-hmm. just an amazing person. Um, thank you for sharing that, uh, about you, what your, your wife uh, going through cancer. How did that, how did that impact? I would imagine that was a fairly a 180 turn on a lot of things that were going on in a direction that was going on, or was it just kind of a, you know, it, it's, it's one of those bombs that dro- get dropped in that you never, ever prepare for, but it's life. How did that it, it, impact it, it, you guys? It, you know, parts of it are probably blocked out. And um, yeah, obviously there was the bomb that went off, no question. Uh, and dealing with that and, okay, how bad is this? and things that are racing in your mind. And unfortunately, um, until there's positive information, it seems we're very capable of dreaming of all the negative scenarios, despite the fact that may not be statistically the more likely. But um, we, we try to be proactive about it in the sense of there, there was a couple really good websites I was able to identify in the sense of for the spouse, for example, what should the spouse be doing? What are, what are some tips? I, I had no idea. I mean, yes, I've had family members go through it. We, we all know people that have gone through it. But it was different because it was me. <laughs> it was my wife. <laughs> um, and, and so trying to find ways of coping with that, no question that that was different. Work schedule obviously completely changed. Uh, focus on health changed. And... Um, there the, the, the were good parts about it in the sense of becoming close, seeing s- some friends, the, the strong support we received from quite a number of people, the way they supported also made me feel guilty. I didn't realize how helpful that would have been to somebody else. So I, I, I try not now to miss that opportunity as well to return the favors and, and to be able to sit down with um, whomever it is that's looking for some some advice from that perspective uh, on the, the the real estate side i i don't know that it had an immediate impact it because the nice thing was our real estate portfolio was it was starting to serve as an anchor for us in terms of strength it it was there for a reason um wasn't quite the reason we were perhaps initially thinking but having financial strength that was very helpful. Having systems in place, having property managers, this, that, and the other thing, it really, really helped. Uh, so we quickly were able to confirm or deny how strong our systems were. Um, clearly, you quickly 
define, in my mind, how strong relationships are. Uh, that there's a, a lot of families that don't survive something of that nature. Um, it's, it's too traumatic. And um, we had, I, I, I don't know if it, maybe it's simple to say, but, uh, and I'd seen some statistics or information about the number of separations that happen because of this type of thing and blah, 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 blah. Nope, not here. Yep. That's somebody else. Um, we were determined. We, we, we had no idea what the good Lord had in store for us, of course. But we were definitely on the fighting side of this. <laughs> we were not going to accept um, whatever somebody may tell us is likely to happen or this, that, or the other thing. It's, nope, this is going to work out. Um, not that we didn't have our moments, but, um, the real estate there was strength. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all that. And, and yeah, I 100% agree, you know, the challenges of health and finances and all kind of everything in between either, you know, it tests, it tests relationships that either you get stronger and you galvanize and you grow together even stronger than ever, or it can cause, um, splinters and fractions and it can separate people all at the same time. It, uh, well, I appreciate. It. I appreciate. It. Is is Robin? Is everything okay? Everything in remission so far? And it, it, good? everything is. I, I mean, pro- probably similar to <laughs> everyone that goes through that. She um, has mixed feelings in terms of going to get the next report, the next test. To say, oh my goodness, is it c- coming back? Type of thing. But um, yeah, yes, everything uh, so far. The good Lord's been very, very kind to us that way. We, we've. Um, I don't. I don't think anybody ever moves on from it, but we're, we're at a very different stage, right? And and you hit the nail on the head there as well of a lot of the things that you positioned yourself in with your investments and your business practice and doing of the work. You know, you never prepare for any of this kind of stuff until it comes. You never prepared, but thank goodness you had that to rely upon to help, yes. um, so, not soften, help you in to get through it. It was one thing we didn't have to worry about. Yeah. I mean, there's parts we obviously did. I'm not trying to pretend otherwise, yeah. but um, they were more manageable. Yeah. And Robin was a key integral part of the team, uh, the operation team within your, she, uh, she ran the entire office, didn't she? Uh, unquestionably. Yeah. So it's like, you know, your main, one of your main team members, you know, this is the right decision. She needs to take a step back and she needs to do yes. there. And it, you know, just not only that, it's just your spouse and seeing your spouse go something through like that would be just absolutely devastating. And, and, and you're so, pow- excuse me, you're so powerless. It, it just, um, wow. I, I, I'm supposed to be able to do this, that, and the other thing, uh, for, for, for my family. And then, I mean, I, you do what you can, but you really do realize uh, you're in the passenger seat. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, And it sounds like you've become stronger in your faith as well at the same time. Uh, I, 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 I don't think we've ever had a conversation about faith before. Were you, were you fairly strong in your faith before this or did it change yes. that relationship? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I certainly don't know. Actually, I, I don't know that it changed. During that, I won't say that it didn't. Yep. Uh, a, a lot of the help we received was uh, families from our church, and um, it, maybe I probably don't shy away as much from. I don't. I don't want to use the term advertise it, but um, I don't hide it. Good. Good for you. And. It's, you know, sometimes in interesting times that we're in a little bit of divisiveness right now. You know, in some cases, we need maybe a little more faith. Whether whether your faith is Jesus or Muhammad whatever that or is. whatever your faith is. Like, we just, sometimes we need a little more faith in our life, right? Mm-hmm. That can never be a wrong, bad thing to have more faith in I, your I life. I don't think so. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, okay. So, wow. I'm sitting there going, how do I pivot out of a conversation? Like, so first and foremost, thank you for sharing that me and, and um i know that's deeply personal and and i like to tell a little bit of the story behind the story and that that impacts people's story and i'm sitting there going now how do we start talking about taxes right. <laughs> accounting but, now but, but but it does evolve yeah. into that in terms yeah. of it, it starts people in terms of what happens what, what's that legacy we want to be leaving um 
how much time do I have to leave that? I, I don't want to wait years and years and years before I get started on this. I, I want to start back, back to your comment earlier. It's a whole lot nicer to start in our 20s. Um, no, I didn't start quite that early. I, it's, like you, I started in my 30s. And not that that was bad. It just wasn't as good as if I would have started earlier. Yep. And, and so being able to address some of those things and, and know when, yeah, what is my plan? Um, how are others involved? What's important to me it, it is what I do right now. Is, is it really that important? Yep. Um, and if it's not, okay, do I need it temporarily? How long do I need it? We're here for a short time. Yep. Let's get our, as big of a bang for a buck as we possibly can. Now, I, I'm going to try to, and I'm just formulating the question in my mind right now, and I'm going to try to ask a good question. And it, it might be one of those questions, like any accountant will say, well, it depends, obviously, right? I like but, that answer. Yeah, that's that's typically the first response. They train that, don't they? It's it's like somebody asks you a question, much. well, it depends, right? Um, okay, so by and large, on a, on a, and I'm going to frame it as a question, better question, on a scale from, say, zero to 10 with zero being nobody and 10 being a hundred percent. Okay. Uh, people that come to talk to you, what, and, and, and usually they're early in their journey or part of their journey on a scale from zero to 10, where are people most in there for their, their kind of their legacy planning when they come talk to you originally? That's a night. I don't know if I've been asked that before. Um, I think the they're probably somewhere in the in, in terms of their knowledge and where they're at in the process, kind of at a three ish. Three ish, okay. Best. Yep. Um, the number of people that are actually doing that is, has increased significantly the last five seven years, I think. Okay. Um, so I would imagine a lot of people have a, an awareness that they need one. Like that's probably really high, like nine out of 10 are where they need something. I, I, more. I, I don't know if it's quite that high yeah, yet, yeah. Russell, unfortunately, mm, okay. but more and more people are gun shy maybe if, uh, to, uh, to say, wait a minute, I was helping with my parents' estate, for example, or my aunts or whomever it may be. And it was an unpleasant experience beyond the normal tragic component mm -hmm. obvious to that. Uh, but, but just dealing with everything was challenging. And if they had a business or an investment portfolio of some size, it presents more challenges. And they didn't want to uh, I, frequently I'll hear the expression, I don't want to leave a mess. <laughs> Yeah. For the Sorry, next generation. I, that was an out loud laugh on my part because I'm I, I you you must have been listening to my wife in a conversation we just recently oh. had. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and that varies because I had uh, one of my clients. He, he's been terminally diagnosed uh, with, with cancer. Uh, been working with him now, I, th I think, three years or so, and he's getting close to the end of his runway, and. But but he's been when we first met. Actually, he had no. It was strictly business. There wasn't this diagnosis out there, and um, he dealt with it very quickly. And in, in my opinion, mentally, to say, okay, he's going to fight it to the degree he can, but likely this is not going to be a happy conclusion. And what should we be doing to to, to make this easier for everybody and to ensure success for? Uh, my kids and grandkids in his case. And and, and so he, he dealt with it, I thought, in a, what I would call a very heroic manner. Uh, it didn't shy away from the discussion points, decisions, uh, brought in his uh, adult children to these discussions. And most of his grandkids are kind of um, probably in their teenage or early 20s type of thing. So he, he's an older gentleman. Um I don't know when he would have himself otherwise chose to uh, deal with some of the the estate legacy type of planning. So I, I have clients where they come in and they're one I had a little bit ago. Um, they were in their 80s before this was something important to them. Others, and I'm seeing a lot more of this, which I think is positive, are in their 30s and 40s 
and concerned not just about their own, but their parents, for example, right, um, or, or, or other loved ones, and trying to make this easier. Because I, I like to use the kind of a, a real rough calculation with people to say, generally speaking, when the second of the spouses passes away, 25% of your estate goes to Revenue Canada. That's a big number. And there are different opportunities available to save or defer that tax. Isn't 25% of your future net worth something we should talk about? No, that could be, in some cases, that could be a huge number. It's right? a big number, right? Yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't take much for somebody to mentally do that calculation to say, okay, what am I worth today? What do I think I'm going to be worth when I do go? Right. And um, now we're kind of in a, a, a part of a process of saying, is it worth a little bit of money to plan and set up a structure that's appropriate to deal with that and save or defer that 25-ish percent or, or not? And most people, the answer is obvious. And even for those that have no children, have no nieces or nephews, well, there's a church or cancer society or whatever it is that's important to you. Um, I, I've got clients that have donated or will be donating uh, virtually their entire portfolio to a particular cause that's important to them. Wonderful. Let's make sure that happens properly. And by the way, do we really want to wait till we're gone or do we want to see and get some joy out of that, giving some of that away while we're alive and we can do something and heaven forbid we have the opportunity to mentor and play around with it and enjoy it. Yep. Wow. We're really, we're really covering all the light and fluffy topics here today, aren't oh, we? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> it, it's, it, that, and, but it's, this is an important conversation to have. Um, I, I, maybe a motto needs to be as gang. It's, it's never too early to start this process and it's never too late to start the process too. You just need to start. You need to start it, but, but, but and, and, and and I acknowledge it seems like a dark topic, but there's a lot of light there too, Russell, in the sense of with my client that's um, been terminally diagnosed, now talk with his children in terms of the assistance he's giving to them now for, for their business and investing opportunities and, and the different charities that he's supporting now and pre-giving to. Um, there's a lot of positives there that he's getting the most out of, he's not waiting to die in the sense of, okay, let's just get this over with type of thing. No, I want to live more because I want to do more. He's got things to do. Right. Um, he, he's getting all he can out of life because he's addressing these issues and, and he's seeing how the success is there or, or more, he's tipping the scales of success for the next generation, the generation thereafter. And I think that's what more and more people can see is the positive parts to it. I mean, I, I get that initially it seems dark and dingy, but there's a lot of light there, a lot of light. Yeah, and I would imagine a good part of the what your practice does and what you help people do a lot of is that whole legacy side of things. Like, absolutely. Um, I and I could be wrong in how when when somebody ever asked me kind of accounting and bookkeeping and tax and all that kind of stuff, I look at it as and 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 fill in gaps if I'm missing something here. I look at it as almost like three functions. Number one, there's kind of like the day to day accounting, bookkeeping, debits and credits, the day-to-day, -day, right? Then there's number two, there's um, the reporting. You have key stakeholders sure. to report to, family, spouse, CRA, partners, you have reporting. And then there's another level that a lot of people don't get to, is, and that's um, the planning, the legacy planning, the optimization. A lot of people just think, tax accounting. They just think kind of, it's just the bookkeeping, but there literally is three levels in my world. And it's great to have somebody that knows all that, but typically that could be two or three people, different people on your team. It, it, it can. I mean, that's one of the blessings I have working with a group of folks. I, for example, am just about the last person somebody's going to call to set up a, a bookkeeping system. Right. Um, Yes, that's something I used to be very strong in, but that's not what I've spent time the last 30-ish years perfecting, whereas I've got a couple of people in the office that are fantastic at doing that. 
Um, I, I'm not going to be the king of debits and credits for financial statements. No question about it. I want to be sitting at the table when there's questions out there, there's opportunities out there, there's problems. That's my role. And from that, I, back to your comment, the planning side of things and short, medium, and long term planning, which frequently is intergenerational. And, and to me, that's exciting. That, 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 that's great stuff in terms of what you can do in, in, and whether we're calling it legacy or what have you. But, but also solving problems. Like, I, I'm, I know you've had these conversations before with people, Russell, where somebody is struggling to live day to day and they're, they're bleeding in resources. Well, what do I do to get life back on track? And it's, it's not that they were trying to uh, be a real estate tycoon. But they were trying to see if real estate had some avenue of helping them get so that they could take care of a, a retirement, leave a little bit of a, a gift down the road to kids or grandkids. So, so there's different scales and it's trying to accept, okay, stop what George would be thinking. What's important to this particular person? Yep. Uh, let's start solving issues. And, and sometimes those issues are, are first dealing with month to month cash flow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here not to be a bearer of bad news. <laughs> However, I'm just trying to be real here and keep it real. Um, I believe that's uh, every entrepreneur will go through that journey and that some way, shape or form will have that challenge of not knowing which end is up and not knowing how to make ends meet. And you're at the gas station going, okay, I've got these three credit cards. This one's maxed out. This one's doing a reno. I think I got a little room on this one, <laughs> right? Right. It, it's just, it, it's, it's just part of the process. Uh, and if you haven't gone through that yet, like I said, if you, if you have aspirations of being an entrepreneur and doing this journey and, you know, if you have big dreams and goals in some way, shape or form, you will have to go through it. And there's no shame. There's no judgment. That's just, it's part of, honestly, it's part of the process. I don't know what the statistics are to this, but I mean, it's not like it's unheard of for very, very wealthy people to have been insolvent at one point in time. Yeah. And not that I'm encouraging that or suggesting that's a great way to start trying the, to work on a strategy, but um, there are ups and downs uh, unquestionably and different ways of dealing with it. But I, I think one of those primary things has to be, okay, I know I need to deal with this. Let's start talking to somebody that can help. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it may not be me. I, I, I'm not, it may not, it may have nothing to do with accounting, for example, initially. It, it may be more strategic advice with what to do with a particular property that may be hemorrhaging cash for you. And what are some strategies to deal with this? And, um, and other times it's more opportunity where I, I, perhaps somebody is younger or just doesn't have that cash sitting there, but they see this fantastic opportunity that's available. How do I actually implement? And, Maybe I can't get the whole pie, but I could get a part of the pie and bring in some other people that would also like some. Yep. And, and I'm just here to tell you, gang, as I just know this from personal experience and of people that I've talked to and also within my own person, within myself, um, the worst thing is to do is to potentially try to go alone, not have a conversation. Um la, 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 everything is wonderful and, and just gloss over it and ignore it and bury your head. Like those are the worst things. Sometimes you, you, you need to shine some light in the darkness uh, because it can get overwhelming. It really can. And, and just how do I know that? Yeah, just, I, I just know it very personally, to be honest. Sure. Um, so, so, so let's, let's pivot this conversation. Um, cause I know you probably have these conversations. I have them with people all the time. I want to go down two two avenues. Um, number one is I'm going to talk about, you know, in, in many markets across the country right now, um, real estate that goes in cycles. Sometimes it's, I'm a king of the world. Sometimes, Oh, I suck. Sometimes the king of the world. I, I'm terrible. Um, we're in that a little bit of margins are being compressed. Interest rates have gone up. Cash flow is getting a little bit tighter. We're getting squeezed, uh, properties, you know, you know, we got some tenants that stopped paying rent and it's just, it's in that phase where it might be a little bit more challenging right now. What advice do you give to somebody if they come to you and they're, they're really, they're looking for some good sage wisdom on to kind of navigate the waters that they're in right now? I, I don't know that I have universal advice because I think it's unique to different folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, what their situations are, 
what they're investing in, what they're trying to accomplish, where they're at in their life cycle, their investment cycle, et cetera. But maybe some of the commonality parts to it is to try to ensure you understand what the situation is. In other words, what, what is your cash flow situation? Um, what, what are your budgets show? How, how are things leading here? And, and then from a strategic perspective with the, your, your various properties, what's the strategy? Um, should we be holding? Should we be selling? Should we be doing this, that, or adding a unit? There's, there's different things, right, that can be done. Should we be trying to get a, a higher quality of a tenant? Should we be working with our tenant to, to get them over um, what, maybe a temporary issue? Talking with the financial institutions in terms, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not oblivious to the fact they're not handing out money like they used to be for sure. But it's it's not like we can't have discussions and trying to figure out where we're at with things so that we've got a better handle on what we're going to do. And, and and part of it too, I think, is and not to sound overly simplistic, but we know with the economy and the the increasing interest rates, there's going to be some people that are really hurt, um, and there's going to be some people that are very successful. So how how do we try and again tip that scale so we're on the more successful side of it? And, and I, I think that's looking at some of the historic things that have happened and cash is cash. I mean, having that reserve and ability to do something, whether you're considering a, a reserve in terms of future acquisitions or just that buffer. When COVID started, for example, the, the first few weeks thinking, I have no idea from a professional standpoint whether I'm going to have a positive or a negative income for a year or two. Um, I have no idea if all the tenants are going to stop paying. I have no idea this, that, and the other thing. So again, you can kind of let worry get in there and, and not that we didn't worry, but, um, okay, I can't change all of that necessarily, but I can start addressing things and start trying to put myself in the best position possible but with starting to preserve some cash, for example. Um, but knowing where you're at with, with, with what's going on. I think we've. I, I, I guess I would say we we, we see the doomsayer saying everything's going to collapse and the whole world's going to be a fiasco. Yet somehow we've magically survived year over year over mm-hmm. year. Real estate, again, not that it doesn't have some ups and downs to it, but it's a. Most of us are investing it because we think it's great. Um, not that there's not some issues with it. There's a whole lot of positives too. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so, so why don't we consider that and let's not panic. Uh, I, I'm not a a big fan of selling off portfolios or things of that nature. Um, where there's some strategic sales, it's a completely different story. I'm more interested in acquisitions as compared to dispositions or uh, repositioning. Uh, Maybe again, overly simplistic, but I, I think getting to cash flows, getting to budgets, that offers some planning opportunities where you can sit down and not just talk with an accountant or other real estate investor, but mm-hmm. talk with other, talk with the team. Yeah. No, um, and everybody is completely unique and different. And and some advice that I share people with, and this is some advice I was given to me and some advice I have to share with myself quite a bit is, First and foremost, tell the truth. Like, just be honest with just the situation and be honest with what's going on. And then at the same time, one of the hardest parts is the the beating yourself up and the judgment and the shame. And if something's not going well, you know, sometimes high performers can be very hard on themselves at the same time. And I should know better. I should know right. all this kind of, I, I know all this kind of stuff. But many people, there's, Different people in different boats. Like, for example, I had two conversations last week. One person was saying the cash flow has never been better in their portfolio because interest rates are going up and I mean, because they're, they're in some cases, they're almost free and clear, but rents are going up, like significantly going up and they're going, geez, uh, we're like uh, cash flow. We've never been more flush on our portfolio. And then in some other cases, some people are going, geez, Russ, we got to, we got to. Cut, we got to cut bait here. We just, we just got to get rid of some stuff. Like it's, 
everybody's in a different boat, right? We might be in the same storm or we might be in the same, the same situation, but you can have a different boat. And, and just by some planning and some long-term um, implementation and action, that really is really where it comes to, in my opinion, is a difference between somebody who's kind of short-term transactional, fairly new, got in with an unrealistic expectation versus somebody that's been around the game for 20 plus years and they've just executed a plan for the last 20 years. Yeah, I guess I would echo that and say, I certainly have obviously been dealing with some people that are very nervous uh, from cash flow, interest rates, et cetera, uh, lack of ability to refinance, uh, tenants, depending on the nature of their investments, not particularly on the commercial side, um, not necessarily renewing leases or the same space requirements, et cetera. But okay, let's 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 look at the whole situation, the, the entire cash flow um, analysis. And while it may not be always pretty, maybe we can do a couple small steps. Maybe we have to sell a property or two, for example. And that all of a sudden gives us such a large buffer, perhaps, depending on the situation, that, yeah, okay, we, we can withstand some more time here. Uh, we, we don't need to panic and get rid of everything that, that I think is rarely the right solution. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and I know we could literally open up an entire <laughs> Pandora's box and completely going down. I, w- I wanted to go down this conversation path a little bit because it's real life. And I want to be mindful of uh, people are, you know, potentially feeling this. So uh, I had a conversation with a, uh, f- a fellow the other day, and I said I was going to talk with George and I'll bring it up with him. Um, they were talking about that they're, they're feeling that they're falling a little behind. Maybe they're a little behind on their record keeping. Maybe they haven't filed their taxes for a year. Maybe it might even be longer. I didn't quite get to the full extent, but they just, <laughs> they they felt like they were just falling behind on a lot of things. And I said, I'll I'll maybe ask George what advice he would give. So if somebody's feeling that they're just not keeping up with the record keeping and the the accounting and the filing and stuff like that, what advice would you give that person first? Make the first step, make the call. And that call, for example, is to, in this case, an accountant. And, And quickly, if you're talking with, I think anybody with a, a little bit of skill set there, they're going to be able to reassure you that you're not the first person in the world that's fallen behind. You're not the first person that's gotten a couple of ugly letters from Revenue Canada saying, we're expecting your tax returns. And um, it's it's going to take a little bit of time to fix. It'll take a little bit of dollars to fix. But let's figure out exactly how bad things are because most people dramatically overestimate how bad they are. Again, I think it's uh, not that I know that I'm not a psychologist in the slightest, but I, I think it's human nature to imagine worst case scenarios. Or, and I'm good at that. Don't get me wrong. But um, particularly when those tax returns haven't been filed, many people are thinking, oh, my goodness, this is just going to be so devastating in terms of a tax bill. At times, they're shocked that it's, it's actually a refund. Um, or at least not as bad as they think. In, in, in most cases, there's a couple that we've dealt with that yeah, I'm sorry, they, it was bad. Uh, but they knew that and there was reasons for it. Um, the, the, but often, they're, I should say often, a, a, not infrequently, people kind of, they're, they're paralyzed with this fear of dealing with their bookkeeping. They, they may hand us, for example, uh, stacks of envelopes that haven't been opened. Um, and, and, and paperwork, and I appreciate more and more of it's electronic now, but they're, they're, they're just accumulating and they can't deal with it mentally. Uh, and that's not bad. It, it's, I'm not trying to encourage people to do that. I don't mean it that way. But recognize that you're not alone. Um, mm-hmm. Let somebody help you kind of get some of that organized. Start a process and let's get year one taken care of. Then we can move to year two, et cetera. And it's it's a process. That's all it is. Yeah. But it, that most challenging part, I have on multiple occasions that, that initial conversation with somebody, and you can just see the relief that is now spread so fastly over them, so fast um, that um, 
now, okay, now it's George's problem. It's no longer my problem, or at least I have somebody going to bat with me here. Yep. And, and, and again, whether it's George or Billy Bob or Betty Sue, that, that part is, is irrelevant. It's more somebody else is helping to share that load and has the experience to deal with that. Pick up the phone, talk with Revenue Canada. Here's a scenario. Yep, we're going to start putting some information together, start start a rapport with uh, the particular agent and show, okay, these are the steps we're following. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Let's work together. There's going to be a couple setbacks that are going to happen. There's going to be some successes that will happen and we'll get through it. Yep. Um, and, 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 but the biggest thing is, it, it may sound simple, but I, I, I swear that just making that initial meeting, phone call, whatever it is. So now somebody is, if, if it's George, for example, saying, okay, I, I want you to send me this, this, and this, and this type of thing. But now George is in charge type of thing. Yep. Um, I, and I, I think that relief is probably something that I'm going to say is unexpected based on some of the expressions I see in people when they chat with me about that, uh, because they, they just come in petrified. Right. And it's, it, it's so visibly obvious the relief that they feel. Mm. I, I, I won't pretend that it happens all the time, I, I guess in fairness, but I mean the vast, vast, vast majority of times. Right. Well, I would imagine, um, now I'm not an expert in this, but I, I would imagine that most times it's like, you know, most people are, it's like anything in life. There's either extreme darkness and it's terrible on one side of the spectrum or everybody it's everything's wonderful. Nothing's the problem, but probably the answer is somewhere in between there. I would imagine. I, I, I think so. And, but it's pretty regular for us to have somebody come in that they're, five, seven years behind, for example. Um, and again, not that I'm trying to tell people they should go That's ahead. Not, this is that. not a how-to, by the way. This is <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. And yeah, some people are then behind a year or two. And, and, and there's various reasons for that. And I, I'm not going to judge why it was or should be. I'm going to help try and coach so that we don't get there again in the future. But it, it is what it is. It, it, don't be embarrassed by it. You, you don't you're not the first person this has ever happened to won't be the last let's just deal with it yep no nice well so great great advice and and george like i i sit there and i block off a, a certain amount of time for these and i always get rocking and rolling i'm going geez i want to double the time i want to do like a joe rogan <laughs> three-hour conversation here but i have to i have to be very mindful of the yes. time here as, as well and and, and and would you be open to having another in-depth conversation uh, no, with, on some different topics? Like like literally, we could have talked on structures and uh, UHT and um, all kind of uh, you know uh, wonderful things like that. Like, and I'm going to share something here with you as well, George. I was doing some of my preparation here for <laughs> our conversation. Um, your your website, you you got a really good looking website. You're doing a Thank you're doing you. a really good job on the social media side of things as well. And um, you have to give all the credit to Robin, actually. Well, but yes, <laughs> and then on on the articles and and the video work and all that kind of stuff, the very good resource of materials and topics here, gang. If you want to really go dive into, if this is if this is your jam, which everybody it should be your jam, by the way. Um, George does a wonderful job on his website, and uh, what's for for people, George? Where where's the best place for people to get a hold of you? So if it's more kind of tax oriented and whatnot, yep. it's G D U B E D U B E at BDO.ca. Yeah. And, or you can uh, shoot me a message at the, the George com site. Yep. And again, if it's tax accounting oriented, basically what I end up doing is I send it to myself at the BDO address and deal with it there. Um, and so, so I think I gave the wrong address for my personal one. It's George Doobie at George Doobie.com. That's right. Um, but um, the, the uh, ultimately all my accounting tax work is done through BDO. I'm a partner with BDO. Um, but um, so some of the steps in terms of getting information out to people, it's a lot easier to do on my personal side uh, as compared to the BDO side. Hey, how's, how's Peter doing, by the way? Peter's doing excellent. Yep. Uh, he, he's uh, pr 
I, I well, guess it's, you go, would it's call golf it to, season now, right? It should be. It should be like in the best it, time of the year for you guys. So. It, it, it it should be, but yeah. we're kind of trying to get through our. We just got through our June fifteenth deadlines. We we saw our April thirtieth. We have some June thirtieth deadlines to to hit, but um, yeah. So P- Peter and I are looking forward to the summer. Want a little bit catch up on some golf, and for, for us, it's also the time to get ready for kind of our. I'll, I'll call it uh, business year starts in September in many right. ways after Labor Day. And that's just and, kind of the planning time to lead up to end of year. And this is when... Exactly. Yeah. It, for us, it's, it's fun and exciting and we can kind of uh, do that while we're also golfing at times. Nice. Well, I'm... I, you guys still have your membership? Which which club was your membership at? At Westmount, yes, West yes, we do. So we, we, uh, I know we I had enjoyed it enough. I had an yes, open we, invitation about ten years ago, and I have not yet taken up on that. Yeah, I've, you're, I've, you're certainly what well, we'd love to have you. No, I would be. I would be honored. Um, I think that I think a lot of business can be done on a golf course, and and it's one of those things. If I'm not doing business meetings, I don't have the time to go golfing myself. Oh, exactly. If you're if you're not doing a a meeting of that nature with family members or good friends, yeah. um, then it's uh, it's hard to justify the time. <laughs> and and we need to advocate about changing that that tax code on golf. Like like they they did, is it only fifty percent they allow, or do they not even allow any of it? it it's zero with golf yeah. uh, dues and memberships. That is the most bizarre thing having. possible. Like the amount of business that can be done on a golf course and and things like that. Now, I know I'm first world problems and there's so many other bigger things to do, but I, I'm shocked that that's not part of the part of the, the now, code. In, in fairness, even though it's not deductible, there's a couple of things we can do from a tax perspective to make it much more affordable. Yep. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's not ideal, but as you said, it's a first world problem. Yeah, I agree. I, there's there's other bigger uh, topics for us to have a conversation over that. And and to yes. put it on as if if I'm griping over that, you know, things life is pretty good. Life's pretty good <laughs> if that's your, if that's your only gripe when it comes to tax. Then then I'm just I just find I find it kind of ironic in some respects. And that's honest to goodness, the tax when you get into the whole tax code, it just don't ever approach it sometimes with common sense because right. it, because you'll just drive yourself bananas. Like you will. And that maybe could be our next conversation, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Um, One of the questions I always like to leave with at the end of a conversation here, and and, and I'm going to ask you this in a second before, but I'm going to share something with you here. So if somebody's feeling a little bit stuck, like just stuck, not sure, next steps, that's the last question I'm going to leave you with. But before I do, um, I just wanted to acknowledge, um, acknowledge you, acknowledge your team. You've always been extremely helpful. Like anytime uh, you've never, ever shied away, you've never put on the clock type of a thing. And you've never said, well, I'm not on retainer or, or, or treated it like a transaction. It's always been real estate and you've always been very helpful to just pay forward to people that need some answers onto something fairly complex. And I just wanted to just acknowledge that for you. Thank you. Yeah. And then, so then the last question is if somebody is feeling a little bit stuck out there right now in the marketplace or just not sure what some next steps and multiple different contexts we can go down, Mm -hmm. what advice would you give somebody that just to help them get a little unstuck, my friend? To me, it's talking with people. And again, whether it's more on the the tax accounting side, great. Talk to someone such as myself. Um, Talk to people that are in there doing that. Why we we were talking about this earlier? I mean, why keep making the same mistakes? Why not learn from all the mistakes I've made? And I've been far from perfect. You've been far from perfect. We've all been far from perfect. Um, but we learned a lot from it, hopefully, and um, would like to pass that knowledge along to help unstuck someone, if you will, because often I, I think we we get the tunnel vision to say I've got to do this or that, whatever it may be. And somebody taking a fresh look at that is going to have a completely different perspective. Nice. And, and uh, it, it, who knows who that person is depends on the nature of the questions too. And sometimes, quite frankly, I wonder if it's not an advantage to ask somebody that absolutely has zero knowledge of the real estate industry, for example, if it's a real estate question, just what, what's your perspective? The, the marketing you're commenting on, for example, I had somebody that had zero understanding of the real estate industry working with us on the marketing side. Uh, and Robin was directing, no question, but in terms of some of the, the subcontract 
points to that. We didn't necessarily want to do what everybody else does on the, the real estate side. Yep. Good for you. And, and, you know, I've been, sorry, George, I've been sleeping at the switch here. It's like, you've been bringing the fire all, all <laughs> along and you know, just dropping one bomb after another here. It's like, I've been, I've been so engaged in just, uh, the conversation at, I, I keep, I'm fit forgetting to push all these little buttons here and stuff like that. So, so George, you're, you're, you're a scholar and a gentleman and you Thank always you. show up and you always deliver. And, um, I, I've, I've always loved our conversations and, and shame on, us Both, uh, for, for it, it, waiting yeah, as long as it was we, for waiting as long as we have. There was two sides. <laughs> yeah, shame on us. Um, it takes two to tango in this thing. But yes. but I I will be reaching out to you again, and I'm pretty sure people that will be listening to this episode and watching it on the YouTube by all means leave a comment. Uh, please do if this resonated with you. If you need that help and support, I highly encourage you to reach out to George and his team um, on his his personal website there's a big giant button on there book a consultation um and you can definitely get some time in the calendar and and just have a conversation with somebody who knows what he's talking about thank you it's it, it's been fantastic russell yeah it's been fantastic yeah until the next one i look forward very to it good. very much okay gang have a great thank day you, everybody. everybody bye for now well that was just a blast if you're interested in keeping moving forward, if you're interested in moving forward with velocity and take the next step that's right for you in real estate, only a couple simple steps from here. Number one, subscribe. There'll be a subscribe link to make sure you don't miss another episode. And if you're interested, there'll be a hand-selected video over here and a playlist for you to continue your journey going forward. All right, let's go.